All right, we're going to graph sinusoidal functions with all their transformations. Now these things shouldn't look too intimidating, even though they kind of look a little crazy. Up until now, you've seen just an F there. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to change, um, instead of saying it's a function F, it's the function sine or the function cos. And you know what those functions look like, and we're going to perform all the transformations. What does A do? What does B do? What does C do? What does D do? We've done all of those things. So let's take a look at an example here very quickly before we look at some transformations. Let's recall the sine function. Remember the period is 2 pi, the amplitude is 1, the domain is negative infinity to infinity, the range is from negative 1 to 1, the phase shift, okay, there is none right now because the original sine graph, if you remember, starts right here. Okay, that's where the sine graph starts. The zeros, where do the zeros happen? Every k pi, where k is an integer. Okay, let's take a look at what happens when we start putting some transformations on. What is this 2? This 2 is a b value. And what do we do with b values? That affects the horizontal and it's a dividing by b, all right? Now, no, before we had the 2 there, the period was 2 pi. So now we're going to take the period and we're going to divide by 2. So the period is now pi. So you can picture that sine graph has just been shrunken, all right? It is now condensed horizontally. All right, the amplitude won't change. The domain won't change. It's still going to go forever. The range won't change. The phase shift, it hasn't moved left or right. There's still no phase shift. But the zeros are going to happen more often now. In fact, instead of every pi, they're every half pi. So do you remember what we're going to do is we're going to say pi by 2 plus, and how do we say half of a pi? k pi by 2. Now really, you don't need this. All right, you don't need to say we're starting at pi by 2 because it doesn't really matter where you start. What we're saying is every half of a pi. Here's every pi, now we're dividing it in 2. All right, let's try the next one. So we're still having a period of pi, but now we're going to affect the amplitude. Okay, the amplitude is now only going to be a half. That is an A value. The A value is a vertical, affects the vertical, and in this case, we multiply the vertical by half. Okay, the domain won't change. The range will change, because now it's only from negative a half to a half. The phase shift, we still haven't moved left or right, and the zeros will be the same as they were when we shrunk the period. Okay. Now what? Let's add one more transformation. This is going to be a phase shift of pi by 4. It's positive pi by 4. It's going to move right pi by 4. So it won't affect the period, won't affect the amplitude, won't affect the range and the domain. The phase shift is pi by 4. Now you can just say that. If, if you use the words phase shift, we're moving right pi by 4. If you're not using the words phase shift, then you should say right pi by 4. Okay, and now if we take the zeros, which were here, and we move them pi by 4, we're going to get new zeros. Okay, all this does is shift everything over to the right, and we can say it that way. All right, last one, what is this going to do? This is going to move it down 3. Okay, period won't change. Amplitude won't change. Domain won't change. But the range will. If we take this range and move it down 3, you're going to be negative 3.5 to negative 2.5. All right, the phase shift is still pi by 4. And what about the zeros now? Well, if the range is from negative 3.5 to negative 2.5, now there will be none. Okay, so that's a quick look at some transformations of the sine and cos graph. Let's try and draw a few of them now. I have a few 
what I'm going to call hints or guidelines, I'm going to ask you to always draw the main curve. This is kind of like, you know, when, when we did the square root, you always started by, we would, you would draw that graph first and then you would move it. Okay, so I'm asking you to draw the sine or the cos graph first. Draw that and then perform the transformations. Typically, we will go in this order. All right, first you're going to affect the period. All right. Then you're going to, um, I would do this next, you're going to do the A. So that's going to change the vertical scale. All right, and then last, we're going to do a, a C and D. This is moving it up and down, left and right. Okay, so first, second, third. That's the order that I would do them in. Sometimes we're going to be able to do it in more than one step. Or, sorry, in less than one or two steps. Okay, so let's graph one of these crazy graphs. First thing I see is sine, so I'm going to draw a sine graph. Now we're always going to draw one period unless we're told otherwise. Since it doesn't say anything, I'm just going to assume one period. Does it say anything? No, it doesn't say anything. Okay, and so I'm going to draw this as my initial sine graph. I'm going to put arrows on it because I'm saying it goes forever. I see my variable is x, so I'll put y here. Okay, so that's your first step. Draw the sine graph or the cos graph. Second step, deal with the b value. b is 2. That means I'm going to find a new period. The new period is the old period divided by 2, which is pi. So the sine graph will happen in pi units. After you do the new period, do the new intervals. Okay, and the new intervals is always the new period divided by 4. So this is pi by 4, 2 pi by 4, which is pi by 2, 3 pi by 4. Now that should be a pretty easy first step. Do that every time. Okay, so we have taken care of B. Now let's take care of A. A tells me I'm going to go up 2, I'm going to go down 2. Okay, and then the last step, I'm going to do this. This is going to be left pi by 2, down 1. Okay, and I see five points. I'm going to do that to each of those five points. So if I have to go left pi by 2, that's going to be that far. So left pi by 2 and down 1. So 1 would be right about here. And I'm actually going to label that point. Negative pi by 2, negative 1. Okay, let's take this peak here and go left pi by 2 and down 1. Left pi by 2 and down 1. So this is at negative 1. <coughs> and then we're going to go left pi by 2, down 1. So let's write that point out. This is pi by 4, negative 3. And then left pi by 2, down 1. And there's our graph. And I'm not going to say where I'm crossing the x-axis, because honestly, I don't know. I'm not asked to find that in these cases. Okay, normally I always say find the x and y intercepts, but I'm going to leave it like that. There's our graph. Okay, maybe we should label it. This is y equals 2 sine 2 x minus pi by 2 minus 1. Okay, let's try another one. Sine graph again. This time this is theta. Sine graph, five points. Draw these five points every time. Don't try to just assume that you can just draw the shape of the graph. Draw those five points. You need to show you can transform those five points. Okay, B is a half. So the new period is 2 pi 
divided by a half, which is 4 pi. So that means we have a pretty easy new scale to figure out. 4 pi divided by pi, sorry, divided 2 pi, what am I doing? The new period is 4 pi, divide that by 4. So I have pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. My amplitude is 3 to negative 3, because that's the A value. Okay, and now I just have to do this transformation. I have to go right pi by 2, up 1. So where is pi by 2? Well, let's put in a couple of... Put in a couple of values here. These are the half pi's. So if I want to go right pi by 2 and up 1, I'm going to be right here. I think I might label that point. I'm going to do it this way because it may be a little cleaner this time. Let's move this one pi by 2 and up 1. Now that one would be nice if we actually labeled it like this. This is 3 pi by 2, 4. Okay, we'll go right pi by 2, up 1. I'm going to label that one too. That's 5 pi by 2, 1. This one I'll move 1 over and up 1. That's going to be 7 pi by 2, negative 2. And then if I move this one over, 1, or sorry, pi by 2, this is going to be 9 pi by 2, 1. Okay. Like so. Okay, and you should label it. And that's how we draw the these graphs. Let's try one coast graph. Okay, we'll start by drawing the coast graph. It's a little different. Here are my five points. All right, what is my new period? Whoa. New period is going to be 2 pi divided by 3. Ooh, that's a little bit ugly. Let's take a look at a new scale. That's going to be the new period divided by 4. How do you divide by 4? This is 2 pi over 3 times 1 fourth, and so you get 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. So let's start by saying here's my period, 2 pi over 3. That means this is pi by 6. This is 2 pi by 6, which is pi by 3. This is 3 pi by 6, which is actually pi by 2, right? 3 pi by 6, 3 6 is a half, so that's a half of a pi. Okay, and it says that my scale, my amplitude is 1 fourth to negative 1 fourth. Okay, now what do we have to do? We are supposed to move left pi by 6 and then go up 2. Okay, going up 2 is really going to we're going to end up way off this chart here because my scale is one quarter. Let's change that to a half. Let's just go up a half instead of two. Okay. So what are we doing? Left pi by six, up a half. Okay. So there is left pi by six. And if I want to go up a half from one quarter, I'm going to go up to what? That's going to be negative pi by 6. What's 1 quarter plus 1 half? That's 3 quarters. Okay, let's go back a half and, sorry, back pi by 6 and up a half. So that's going to be 0 half. Back pi by 6 and up a half. That's actually going to take me right here. 
to pi by 6, 1 quarter. Back, pi by 6. Remember, every one of these intervals is a pi by 6, so that's pretty easy to move back. So back, pi by 6, up a half is going to take me up to here. So that's pi by 3, a half. And then this point is going to be here at pi by 2. And where is it? It's at 3 quarters. Okay, one of the biggest mistakes people make when they do these graphs is they think that they can just draw one point. If they move one point and then they think, oh, I can probably make the right shape. Don't do that. Take the five points and move them. All right, even though that's probably a little bit overkill, you probably only need to do two or three, they're going to ask for the correct shape. So the correct shape would involve the full period. So with five points is much better to do. All right. Your homework on the handout, the yellow sheets. There are 14 graphs. Now you're going to notice some of them are in degrees. How would that change things? Well, the only thing that's going to change is when you do your period, instead of using 2 pi, you're going to use 360. So you divide 360 by b. Okay? So try those. Please ask if you get stuck on them. All right.